Hi again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm and today I want to answer the question about whether you can successfully grow a climbing rose in a container in these kinds of areas here where I'm going to talk about the patio type area, the back deck, the veranda, outdoor living space that uh, you want to grow plants in but you can't put the plants directly into the ground. The answer of course to this is absolutely you can successfully grow a climbing rose in this kind of space. It's a great use for a climbing rose. It gives definition to the space. However, you do have to pick your container size rather carefully. I'm going to go through that a little bit today. I'm going to talk to you about some of the basic minimum sizes of containers you should use for that and uh, then after that I will talk a little bit about their care and the kinds of varieties you can choose for this uh, for this purpose. So if you tuned in for anything it's probably this piece of information. What's the minimum pot size you should be able to use for growing a climber? And if your climber is an, say an average to small sized climber, uh, eight feet tall, this should be sufficient. And I just want to zoom in to give you some of the dimensions here. But this is actually 16 inches across the top. 16 to 18 inches should be fine. That's the equivalent of about a 15 gallon trade pot. So if you're looking at nursery pots, that's what it is. Now obviously you can go larger than this. That's just the minimum. The bigger you go, the less demanding it will be for you to water the plant. Really what you're trying to get is the right balance of roots to shoots on this. And if you have big, big, long stems on your rows, having a tiny little rot pot will make it hard to keep up with the watering. Now something that I will probably do here, and this is my final size over there, is I'm going to nest that pot that nursery pot into a larger decorative pot. That's the way I intend to use it. And that way I get two benefits. I get a nicer looking pot, but I also get shielding from the sun because that inner pot, if left on its own, would pick up the heat from the sun's rays very, very quickly. Whereas if it's shielded behind or nested inside of another pot, it will actually shield it from those, uh, it'll, it'll keep it a little bit cooler over time. I want to show you one other option here because some people have asked me, well, what if I can't find a large trade gallon or trade pot like that? And this here is sort of the fabric pots you can get online. Uh, they come in a five pack like this pretty reasonably actually. And they fold out to be the same kind of size that we're talking about here. This is the 15 gallon pot here. And you can see it's roughly the same dimensions as the 15 gallon uh, a plastic pot, if not a little bit bigger. So that's one way you can go. Again, that could be nested into a larger decorative pot. Filling up some potting soil now, and I'll give you a good look at it here, but what you'll notice about it is that it's got lots of perlite in there. Perlite is the little white bits, and they make it a relatively free draining mix. I don't want to see this pot become waterlogged. That would be bad for the roots of the rose. What it also has in it, and then you'll see the little green bits there, is controlled release fertilizer. The controlled release fertilizer is so I get better control over how quickly it gets fed, and it gives it a good base level of food over a long period of time. So let's talk a second about varieties. The one I've chosen to pot first today is John Davis and I chose this one for the benefit of my fellow gardeners in colder climates because it's actually hardy down to zone two or three I think which is wonderful. It's a repeat flowering pink colored rose and I'm going to pot that as we talk about other varieties. I happen to also be fond of the miniature roses, the miniature climbers that is. Laura Ford I featured on this channel before, but you also might like this one that I'm going to throw a picture up of, which is called Warm Welcome. Now as you pot this, uh, if it's in a pot already and it has some roots down to the bottom, you may want to just break up the base of the pot a little bit, break up the, the soil at the base and bring the roots out a little bit, just so that in case there's a bit of a uh, root bound or root circling, that that should cure the problem. I can also suggest the Arbor Rose series of roses from Cordes, which I like a lot because they're in a very reasonable size range. Seven through nine feet is about the average on that, unlike some of the climbers and go up to 12 or 15 or 20 feet. So that's a good series to go with. So having broken up the soil around the base of the, uh, the pot and placed it sort of at crown depth within the pot here, I'm just gonna top fill the soil and firm it in.
Now that I put it in the pot, I'm going to have to secure it up to this post here as it begins to grow. I'll probably just try some twine between these slats here and bring it straight on upwards. The other things you want to consider as you're deciding whether to do a climbing rose on your patio is your location, your site, especially sun exposure. Your roses will perform a little bit better if they get full sun, so that's about six hours plus of sun a day. You can get away with a little bit less if it's an otherwise bright location, but typically six hours or so. There are some roses that are a little more tolerant of shady conditions, and I go through that in a completely different video, which I'll link above here. Uh, aside from sun, tying it up, fertilizing, watering is probably the next thing you have to consider is that even though you've chosen a large enough size container to support it, you're going to have to take down a regular watering routine. I'd like to try to get it down if I can to two or three times a week. That way it's not too onerous on you. And so if you find that it's drying out between waterings on that schedule, you may have to consider a larger container. All right, thanks so much for watching this video on how to grow a climber in a container, especially for your patio or back deck. And if you have any questions about that, please drop them down in the comments of the video. I'll see what I can do to help.